I'm Diane Ravitch. Uh, I'm research professor of education at New York University. When I, when I talk about improving education, I, I always talk about what a, what a complete education consists of. And I always begin with, um, in addition to the basics, which we're now emphasizing endlessly and testing endlessly, a complete education begins with the arts. And it also includes history and civics and geography and the sciences and foreign languages and physical education. Those are the basics um, to me. But I always begin with the arts because to me, the arts are such a, an elemental form of human expression uh, that it's hard to imagine having a, a, a qu high quality of life without the ability to engage in music and dance and uh, to, uh, to do art, to appreciate art and to do art, both of those things. I think the arts today have so many different forms that it's almost impossible to list them because many uh, people, uh, particularly young people, are, are adept at creating art in, in digital forms, which I wouldn't know how to do, but I can enjoy them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that when you see the response that people of all ages have, and, and in all cultures for that matter, to a visual art, uh, to, uh, to dance and to song, you realize that it's, it's fundamental to us as human beings that we have to engage in expression and also um, uh, participate in, in viewing other people's expressions. Uh, one of the things that strikes me is that uh, when you do art all by yourself and no one ever sees it, it doesn't really become art until you share it with others. Uh, this is something that, that I've learned about writing, that if you write just for yourself and you never show it, you write something and then you kill it on your computer, it's not really writing. Uh, writing is what you write f to be read and not just by yourself. And in the same sense, art, whether it's song or dance, is created to be shared. I think that what makes art powerful, particularly, um, well, for people of all ages, but particularly for children, is the capacity to express one's feelings. Um, and and that, that might range from uh, joy uh, to all sorts of negative feelings, but just the ability to have a format in which to express them and not to bury, bottle them up inside you. And I think art creates the opportunity for uh, a very uh, personal expression of, of uh, joy, rage, uh, all sorts of things in between. The arts are not a silver bullet in relationship to test scores. The arts are a fundamental aspect of being human. So the argument has to be made for the arts that to deny them to children uh, is wrong uh, because it cuts them away from one of the most important forms of human expression and spiritual expression, uh, and that to the extent that arts classes and arts teachers are uh, removed, uh, it will be to the, particularly disadvantaging to the children who already have the least. So that it might be almost a form of, of, of class and race discrimination. Uh, if you look around and you see that the, where the layoffs are occurring and where the arts are being, uh, time is being reduced or eliminated for the arts, it will invariably be in the poorest communities. Uh, so I think the, f the basic argument for the arts has to be made in terms of what the arts uniquely contribute. And, um, and so I would argue don't buy into the, uh, the testing world's uh, arguments, but rather insist on what is uniquely valuable to the arts, and that is the, the power of, of, of development, of personal development, of human development, of spiritual development, of creativity development, all of these issues being, these being, uh, uh, the qualities that the arts address uh, that are not addressed by other parts of the curriculum. There is something in the nature of schooling today, at least in most schools, that's very abstracted from reality. Uh, when children learn about history, they don't feel that they're part of history. They're learning about something that happened very far away and they read about it in a textbook and it seems very unreal to them. Uh, the same thing with almost everything that they study. There's, there are many different levels of abstraction uh, that separates them from what happened or what is happening or what might happen to what they're learning. I think that one of the uh, unique functions of the arts is that it's immediate, it's real. The participation in the arts is something that it involves you and what you do and what you see, what you hear, what you uh, make with your hands or what you create out of, of the interesting channels in your own brain. 
uh, this is real. So I think that is a, a, a way of filtering through all these levels of abstraction that separate children from real life. In a sense, it's uh, one of the reasons why du John Dewey uh, wrote about the arts, because the arts are experience. And most of the school studies, studies uh, young people are learning about other people's experience. In the arts, it's their own experience that they are recreating for themselves and for other people. Well, I think that the uh, arts advocates have to make the case for the arts based on what the arts alone can do. Uh, and this is a very powerful argument. I think it resonates with the public. And I think that in any situation, in any city, in any school district where the arts are threatened, uh, that arts educators have to go right to parents, right to the public, right to the civic leaders, right to the business leaders. I mean, there is an, arg there is an economic argument to be made for the arts. They are a powerful generator of, of, of economic activity cultural activity in every community in this country. And many people move to cities or to communities specifically because of the cultural advantages. Uh, but I think that the, the, the basic argument is about the development of children, the development of young people, the opportunity to become a, a, a full and complete human being. And no one wants their child denied those opportunities. So I think that the, what's crucial is uh, in this time where we have our leaders on, on both sides of the aisles, Republicans and Democrats, obsessed with testing, obsessed with data, obsessed with the very things that crush the spirit of creativity and, and originality uh, amongst young people, uh, it becomes all the more important that arts educators make their argument and say, uh, our case is not based on test scores. Our case is based on what's right for children, what's right for young people, and providing every young person the opportunity uh, that we would want for our own children.